and here a very small one, just because the camera is at a different place. So it's not uh, good enough. So you have to put a ground object to make the interaction. Okay, Every know, everyone know how to put a plate. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> and then you take my, sh my OSL shader and you put it on the ground. Uh, the main problem I have with uh, OSL now is that I'm uh, doing direct image reading and not image from uh, cycles or from Blender. So you have to enter by hand the text of where is the picture and the name of the picture. So I made a copy paste from the name of the environment and put it in my shader. It's uh, maybe surely sometimes we will have a file selector here, but not yet. <laughs> so uh, in a pure OSL development, there is metadata that allow to open a file selector here. Surely in future version of Blender. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the most difficult part to make a copy paste. <laughs> and then uh, the things that you have, it's you have a very flat, because it's a ground, very flat HDR picture put on the ground with a absolutely not real scale. Uh, then you have to put your uh, spherical projection in the center of the world exactly as the same way as it was made. Uh, all, the, all HDR in this presentation are made by myself, so I write on a notebook. Okay, this one was about one meter 60, one meter 50, and so I know where is the camera. And then I have just to put the same origin, the height of the HDR, uh, HDR shooting with the camera in Blender. So it was one meter 0.5. And then I have correct scale according to the track. The second thing is, oh, is to control the white balance to, uh, I explained before, to have a gray or the color you want on the ground. As you can see, it's not so hard. Then you have the most difficult things to do. It's to model. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, I don't like to model, so I just put uh, cubes. <laughs> it's uh, not so difficult for me, so I put cubes. Uh, if there is a sun, you just add the sun. It's uh, nicer than letting cycle doing all the things. And uh, you put cubes, and you put them with this view, with the round red view aside, so you can see if the map is correctly on the cubes. When you move them, you will see that it moves on the object. You will see the HDR moving. And uh, at one moment, you will see that the cube is perfectly on the ground with the wall on it. When you do it, just uh, iteratively move the cube. Oh, it's OK. So, And uh, you continue up to the full scene with, uh, with the roof and so on, and uh, some other objects if you want. Just cubes also. And then you have all the scene, which uh, all, your, uh, your, all your HDR is now object. And then you can move the camera everywhere on your, in your scene. As you can see, now there is no a big truck and a small one. It's just the same. And you can move in, inside my, uh, oh, I don't know what it is, uh, old building. <laughs> Uh, this is a shader of the, the test shader of the truck. Uh, it works very well now. Okay, as you can see, it works very well. I can show you a video of how it works. No. You can see the camera is moving and you are inside the HDR. So you can turn around, you can do whatever you want, you can animate and so on. Uh, the main uh, advantage also of this method, it's because I made it for testing shaders and so I don't want any compositing because I don't want to make a renders and composite and so on. It's too long process to test shader. When I'm testing shader, I want to change uh, one thing and see immediately what happened. Uh, so, another example. 
so that's why I made this way. It's the fastest way because you have it in real time here, and so you can try whatever you want. It's fast, and you don't need to make compositing because all I show here, it's possible by compositing without writing OSL shaders. Just is a long process because you have to render, you have to have many passes, uh, ambient occlusion passes, and so on. And then I have uh, compositing and render the compositing. So it's too long for me. It's back here. Uh, currently, it's working very well, but it's not finished. Of course, uh, as you can say in Blender, nothing is really finished because we can make it better. So how to make it better? The first thing is to go further. Actually, I just put colors on object. It's not enough. Uh, I want to have bumps because it's nicer with bumps. I want to add reflection because now I can put an object on water. It will not work if I put an object on the ocean. I want also to add mask because uh, I love to model cubes, but uh, it's not enough to make a tree. So I want a mask to cut the tree and uh, still modeling cubes for a tree. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> and also a pure control of alpha channel to have an alpha channel, a path of alpha channel with just the shadow on the object and not the color. And most difficult things, it's to optimize it. Uh, currently, all, there is just one shader on all the objects. And so uh, it makes a full rendering with ambient occlusion and so on on all objects. It's not really smart. Uh, what I want to do is optimize it. Uh, I optimize in the same way. I plan to optimize the same way as I did for uh, Pila. Uh, it means that control of incoming ray to see if I want to make all the computation or not. Uh, the best thing uh, to do is, for example, did I want for uh, transparency ambient occlusion? Usually it's no, and because it's slow. So if the ray is transparency, I will switch off ambient occlusion. And so it makes it really faster. Uh, on Pila, uh, Pila is a layering system, layering shader. Uh, I can go up to 60% faster uh, than the original shader without layer, uh, just by controlling the ray. So soon, I will do this. Uh, so it's fast. The aim is to ask me to be fast. So if you have any question about it, uh, just say uh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's not uh, currently made for camera tracking because you have at one moment to have one HDR and model it. Uh, so what you can do is model some objects, but not all, and then do camera tracking, use this shader for the smaller, smallest object or closest object, and let the environment be uh, the usual environment. Uh, with camera tracking, you have the camera movement, you have the real object, and I think uh, it's okay. What, what I meant was instead of having to write down the camera is at that many meters high, that many meters from that wall, oh, it's, uh, you, you could just, after you've taken the photos, you could, with the same camera, uh, start you could, filming you, and then move it a little bit so that Blender will just position the camera exactly where it was inside the scene. Yes, so you don't have, in fact, to, uh, to know exactly where it is. Just, uh, yeah, you, you are right. If you use camera tracking, you don't have to exactly uh, notice where, where is the camera and so on. Uh, indeed, I make uh, 360 degrees uh, panoramas. It's not a real photo. I never try the camera tracker on panoramas. Uh, and uh, it's possible you can uh, film a, a sphere and then uh, make the panorama with it and do camera tracking with it. But yeah, I never I... try it. <laughs> okay. Any other question? So you can start by shooting all around and then stitching these into a 360? Uh, yes, yes, it starts by uh, shooting all around. Uh, I use a Nikon, uh, Nikon uh, SLR camera uh, with a 10.5 millimeter fisheye. And so I make about uh, 90 photos. <laughs> 
It's a nine point of view of 10 uh, bracketing exposure uh, on a special tripod and uh, and I use a gigapan uh, to uh, to make to stitch the panoramas. And, uh, all panoramas you can see there in presentation are made by myself. Okay, I have uh, two questions. Do you use a, you don't use a sun lamp when you close the scene? But do you sometimes leave it open and then add a sun lamp for yes, extra shadows? Yes, for example, like, like this, I had a, I had a sun. Uh, it's usually the sun is in the panorama, is in the HDR. Uh, but it needs a lot of uh, computation, a lot of rendering power to find it for cycles, and so you need to make a lot of pass a lot of uh, recursion. So if you uh, just put a light in the same way as the sun, it will be really faster to do and you will have uh, nice shadows as you want. <laughs> so I prefer model the sun. Uh, okay, I have another question about OSL. If you could get one thing or if you would uh, improve one thing in Blender, what, what would you want? Would you want more speed or your file oh, picker? Or? Um, so there's many things to improve. Uh, the first thing is metadata to be 100% compatible with uh, other OSL shaders coming from uh, other people. <laughs> not working with Blender. Uh, the second thing is, uh, yes, uh, currently OSL is slower than, uh, than just the CPU. When you put OSL on, it's a little bit slower. So of course we always need more speed. <laughs> so I need more speed. Uh, I need a GPU OSL and uh, I need a Quadrixeon computer, but uh, I don't have them. <laughs> Um, okay, we have to wrap this up, so thank you very much, uh, Francois. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Great.